By now, you've probably heard of ChatGPT. In this video, we'll try to give you a complete overview of what it is, how it works, how to use it, and most importantly, how it can benefit our workflow in architecture and the connections it has with Rhino and Grasshopper. Near the end of 2022, we've seen the rise of various artificial intelligence tools, but maybe the most interesting one that everyone's talking about now is called ChatGPT, developed by OpenAI which got around 1 million users in 5 days, which is really insane. It took Facebook more than 10 months to achieve the same result. We made a video a little while ago about some AI tools such as Midjourney and its capabilities. You can check it out here. But it seems as if it wasn't interesting for you guys as initially thought based on the number of views that we got on YouTube. However, when I asked you if you're interested to hear how these new AI tools can be used in architecture, to improve our workflows, I got an overwhelming amount of response and emails from you guys, so I decided to dive deep into this topic and show you everything we know. OpenAI is an artificial intelligence research lab founded in 2015 by Elon Musk, Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, and the company's mission is to improve and develop friendly AI in a way that benefits humanity as a whole. Here's an insert from the conversation of Sam Altman and Elon Musk. Speaking of uh, really important problems, um, AI. So you have been outspoken about AI. Um, could you talk about what you think the positive future for AI looks like and how we get there? Okay, I, I mean, I do want to emphasize that um, this is not really something that I, I advocate or, or this is not prescriptive. This is simply pre hopefully predictive. Because um, people will sometimes say, well, like, like this is something that I want to occur instead of so this is something I think that probably is the best of the available alternatives. Um, the best of the available alternatives that I can come up with and maybe somebody else can come up with a better approach uh, or, or better outcome is that uh, we achieve democratization of AI technology, meaning that uh, no one company or uh, a small set of individuals has control over advanced AI technology. I think that that's very dangerous. Um, it could also get stolen by somebody bad, you know, like some evil dictator or country could send their intelligence agency to go steal it and gain control. It just becomes a very unstable situation, I think, if you've got any, um, any incredibly powerful AI. Um, you just don't know who's who's going to control that. So it's not as though I think that the risk is that the AI would develop a will of its own right off the bat. I think it's more that's a concern is that some, someone um, may use it in a way that is bad. GPT is highly advanced AI model with an impressive 175 billion parameters, trained on a vast data set of text, including significant portion of the internet, Wikipedia, and books. Its primary purpose is to predict the next word in a series of words based on the words that came before it. ChatGPT is a variation of GPT that has been specifically fine-tuned for conversational tasks, making it exceptionally good at chatting. In simple terms, OpenAI developed a dialogue data set composed of chat conversations generated by their team of human AI trainers and used it to fine-tune GPT 3.5 for conversational tasks. After that, the outputs were evaluated by human reviewers to determine their quality, and based on this feedback, the model is learning and improving itself. It's really important to note that ChatGPT is not some mysterious or magical technology, but rather the result of systematic training and improvement process. When I first saw ChatGPT, I didn't think much of it. My friend who works in the IT industry as a system admin, I sent me a message that said, you have to check this out. This tool helped him to write some code, and based on that, he managed to do five times more work in a single day. I was impressed, so I did check it out. At first, I didn't think much of it, but then the more I interacted with it, the more I understood how we can potentially use this in our own business to help us with repetitive tasks or answering questions, writing proposals, even reaching out to potential students, uh, generating content ideas, brainstorming, and even writing scripts and titles for uh, YouTube videos. All you need to do is go to openai.com, 
register your account and start using ChatGPT. At the time of this recording, ChatGPT is still free to use for everyone, but just recently OpenAI revealed the paid version for $20 a month, which will allow you to have longer interactions and there won't be any downtime since the paid customers will be a priority. The first thing to know when interacting with ChatGPT is that you need to give it input or the prompt, and based on that input, it will give you the response. You may encounter the phrase prompt engineering, and this simply represents the method of making sure that the input are given to the language model, the prompt, is specifically designed to get the output or result that you want. Oftentimes, when you first start playing with ChatGPT, it won't give you the best result. So, in that case, you would use prompt engineering and training so it understands and exactly knows what you're looking for. For example, when I tried to create a model in Rhino using Python, which I mentioned uh, previously, ChatGPT didn't give me the correct code right away. I tried to ask it to create a surface with distributed cubes on it with the same base dimensions but randomized heights. It took a lot of back and forth uh, to make this work, but in the end, I got the result that I wanted. It was just a matter of training the model so it knows what the correct output is. Once you train it properly, you can use the same thread in ChatGPT to give it new instructions and to remember the previous information so you don't have to retrain it from scratch. There are so many possible use cases of ChatGPT, but let's start with the very basic ones. For example, you can use it as a source to find answers. Instead of going to Google to look for the answer and spending time browsing the websites to find relevant information, you can simply ask it and it will give you all of the information right away. For example, here I asked it to give me the top 10 architectural firms that are using Rhino and Grasshopper in their workflow. Here are the results. This is probably the reason why uh, Google search team recently had so-called code red alert, which means that they feel threatened and afraid of how this technology would impact their monopoly over browsing for information online. In case you didn't know, Microsoft recently invested $10 billion in OpenAI and became the largest shareholder in the company. And their plan is, of course, to integrate ChatGPT with the Bing search engine. Another area where ChatGPT does wonders is writing essays, summaries, emails, cover letters, and pretty much any kind of text that you need. For example, it can give you a 5 or 10 bullet summary of a book you want to know more about, or a quick summary of your favorite podcast. A lot of people started using uh, ChatGPT for writing articles, summarizing research papers, and writing in a particular language style. Writing essays for homework has never been easier for high school students, and universities are starting to rethink their policies if they should ban ChatGPT or try to incorporate it in their curriculum. Just listen to what Jordan Peterson had to say about it. Okay, so now we have an AI model that can extract a model of the world from the entire corpus of language. All right, and it's, it's smarter than you, and it's going to be a hell of a lot smarter than you in two years. So you can get ready for that too. But it's not that smart yet because it's just a humanities professor at the moment. It doesn't test its linguistic knowledge against the real world. That's what a scientist does, right? You come up with a theory that's linguistically predicated and then you throw it against the world and see if it sticks. And then the world tells you whether or not your linguistic construction is valid. But the new AI systems will be able to extract out patterns from the world itself, from images and so forth, and then be able to test their linguistic constructions against the world, and so they'll practice just like scientists. And the most advanced models are going to use text and image and action as well, because they'll be able to model human action. And so, and all of that's gonna come down the pipes within the next year. So hang on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, because what did my friend Jonathan Pajot say? Giants are going to walk the earth once more. And we're going to live through that, maybe. Since it's a language model, ChatGPT understands all languages in the world, including programming languages such as C-sharp, Python, which means that you can use it to write code without ever needing to learn how to code. This, of course, 
is far from perfect uh, from the get-go right now, but you can use it to get started and train the model to produce exactly what you had in mind. Imagine just being able to describe with words what type of parametric model you'd like to create and ChatGPT would give you the code. In fact, I tested this method with Python and Rhino. It gave me the result that I wanted. I'll think about creating a special video on this workflow, so if you're interested to see this, just let me know in the comments. Now, if we take a look at other creative industries, there are clear indications of how ChatGPT can help with the development of creative ideas and improve the overall efficiency of our design processes. Whether it's the web design industry, graphic design, or even UX and UI industry, you'll see some amazing results and outputs when using ChatGPT in combination with Midjourney. Here are just a couple of interesting examples that clearly show what type of designs can be produced when using these tools together. Currently, I think that we have to use this only as inspiration and then code this manually, but pretty soon I'm sure that we would have the tools that would be able to create websites like these, including all the coding elements as a complete package. Imagine just typing a prompt for the type of website you'd like and you get it in a couple of minutes. Pretty crazy. The industry of video creation and video editing will probably be next. If we can instruct AI to help us generate an image, it can certainly help us to create an image sequence which would then be translated to a video that we can watch and we wouldn't know the difference. These tools are expected to appear this year and I cannot wait to see how we'll be able to use them. Imagine just typing in the prompt what your video is going to be about and you would get the perfect result. I also wonder what would this mean for the movie industry and its creative process. Just take a look at the application called Runway, which uses AI and it allows you to pick objects in a video and quickly delete them if necessary. I cannot wait to see what Adobe will do with its line of products like Photoshop and Premiere. It would be super cool to just type into prompt, hey Premiere, I need you to delete all of my ums and us in the video and speed up it two times and it does it for you. This would save us so much time. Another creative industry being impacted right now is the music industry. ChatGPT can compose music, write lyrics based on a particular style you want, or even combine multiple styles into one. OpenAI even came up with a special tool called MuseNet that specializes in creating music. If you ever played video games, you know how important it is for the game to be realistic and interesting to watch and play. Creating video game assets like weapons, potions, upgrades, etc. was a very time-consuming process that took so much time and effort. Well, thanks to ChatGPT and Midjourney, creating video game assets like these has never been easier. And lots of video game companies are thrilled to be able to use this technology in their own workflow to save costs. Right now, only using ChatGPT you can start experimenting and creating your own simple 2D video games. There are even examples of people creating video game characters with ChatGPT and Midjourney. This is not, of course, fully automated yet, but I think it's just a matter of time. All right, let's talk about using ChatGPT for architecture. First, I wanted to give you a bit of context of what this technology is, how it works, how it's used in other design fields, and now let's see how it can help us. As a fun exercise, I asked ChatGPT how we can use it for architecture, and the answers it gave me were the following. Generating architectural descriptions, design assistance, code estimation, code compliance, energy analysis, and automating drafting and modeling. Okay, that sounds a bit boring uh, if you ask me, and even though some of these are true, like design assistance or code compliance, Things like automating drafting and modeling are simply not there yet. ChatGPT, again, is a language model and it cannot produce any type of visual graphics or presentations yet, but uh, it can be used in combination with other tools that can do just that. When it comes to architecture, I think that the biggest impact that we will see in the short term is an extremely fast generation of conceptual design ideas. Thanks to tools like Midjourney, we can now create design iterations much faster without the need to even have a 3D model. Instead of spending hours brainstorming and coming up with concepts and then manually modeling everything, texturing and rendering, architects can now input what type of project they would like to develop and receive a couple of 
ideas in just a few seconds. This not only saves us time, but also opens up new possibilities for designers to be more creative in their work. The AI system can also help us refine the generated ideas and make them more usable at the end before we go to the next phase of the project. I think that the architectural visualization industry has to adapt very quickly to these new AI tools and find a way to integrate them into the workflow and provide additional value because if it doesn't, I'm afraid that over time architectural visualization won't be as needed as much as it is needed now. So let's recap. Currently, we can type the prompt and get a bunch of image variations of our idea, but what if I want to go a step further and develop a conceptual massing 3D model, then beam model, drawings, and so on? Well, currently we're in the infancy of this technology. There are a couple of excellent tools being worked on, like NVIDIA's Get3D, which is trained based on a huge set of 2D images. Then we have a tool called Point E, and it is also being developed by OpenAI. Currently, it kind of sucks because it can produce only very, very basic 3D models, but I'm sure that this year we'll have a major shift in this technology and we won't need to worry anymore about finding the best modeling libraries because we'll be able to just create anything using text prompts just like we use ChatGPT today. I'm really excited to see how the applications uh, and big guys like V8, Twinmotion or Unreal Engine will react when this becomes reality. All right, and what about using ChatGPT with our favorite tools like Rhino and Grasshopper? Well, since both Rhino and Grasshopper can read Python, this means that we can ask ChatGPT to create a certain type of 3D model and design, and it would create it in a form of Python code that we can then use in Grasshopper or Rhino. Imagine being able to simply explain in a text format what type of Grasshopper definition you want, and then the program creates it for you. Currently, this workflow is very time-consuming, full of bugs, and frankly quite exhausting because it requires a lot of training and repetition for very basic results. But I'm sure that we will see some plugin very soon that would help us and make this much, much smoother and easier. Does this mean that we won't even need to know Grasshopper and Rhino in the future? Well, I guess the time will tell, but one thing is for sure. I think that we shouldn't run away from this technology and pretend it is not important or relevant yet. I think that we should get familiar with it and possibly use it to make our workflows as efficient as possible. Now, I'd like to hear from you. What do you think uh, about this technology? Do you think that these AI tools can help us in our design process and are you going to try them out? Let me know in the comments and see you soon. If you're an architect and you're looking to quickly learn Run and Grasshopper, we have a completely free training on our website that's going to help you discover and learn the core principles of Rhino, the basic logic behind Grasshopper, and you'll find out what these tools are capable of in architecture. Go check it out, the link is in the description.